Rogers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast. Broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie, I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you today? Man, I am great. I got a Starbucks on one side of me, and I got a whiskey drink on the other side. It's just a, this it's, is, this it's is just gonna a be... traditional whiskey sour, man. It's nothing real exciting. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. Oh, and I know. I, and it I'm is. feeling, and I'm feeling pretty hyped, man. I'm, I'm, I'm an expert on sours. <laughs> yeah, like this is this is my wheelhouse in cocktail well, mixing. I'll tell you, this is one I used to make at the house periodically, mm-hmm. and mine didn't come out this good. Yeah, I mean, well, I thought mine came out pretty good. Like I didn't think that mine were bad, but but this is next level. Oh, I perfected it over the years. I, I can imagine. I it, can tell. This is actually one of the first cocktails that I that I like really enjoyed. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, besides margarita, obviously, because yeah, yeah. that's a, that's just, I don't know, something that you get everywhere, whatever. And mm-hmm. the whiskey sour is something you can order pretty much anywhere. Um, I, people make it a bunch of different ways though. And yeah. so I don't use the soda water or, or ginger ale or whatever. Some people, Sprite, I mean, I don't know. People put <laughs> yeah. all kinds of, uh, of stuff on top of it. And for m- mine is just, um, lemon juice, simple syrup. Actually, I, I do rich syrup, but no. lemon juice, rich syrup, and and whiskey. It works. Yeah, I know. It's, def- it's definitely got that. It's got a nice flavor to it. I don't know. There's just some. Well, and there's something to be said about the fresh lemons and like mm-hmm. doing it right. You know, not not cutting any corners. There's a um, really. It should have an egg white in it. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, to make it like really frothy, and it kind of changes. It makes it gives it this like kind of velvet texture. And you do that before you um, shake it. No, you do it as you shake it. As like you, you shake, you you add it in, and it's shaken up together. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, that's what I meant. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah cool. It's part of the mix, and then you shake it up together. There's like a special little spring that you get for your shaker to to deal with uh, beating eggs essentially. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have that though, and I I have a like a. It's not an allergy exactly, but a, an intolerance to eggs. Oh yeah, um, mild. So yeah. I can have like an egg. Yeah. But if I have two, I'm like doubled over with stomach pain <laughs> later. Yeah. So I don't keep eggs. So so oh yeah, so you don't have them available. I was yeah. gonna say like one in this drink wouldn't have hurt you. There's Split a, two um, ways. It's like what they. Uh, oh, gosh, I can't remember what it's called. It's like um, aqua something or other that they they store uh, chickpeas and stuff like that in. Yeah. Um, that is a, is supposed to be like a good substitute for egg white. Yeah. Um, and you can buy it separate. Yeah. I, I have considered doing that. I just don't know how long it keeps and I don't know how frequently I would use it. So yeah. I'm hesitant. Every time you make a whiskey sour. Well, yeah, but I don't usually do it that frequently. I like, I bump, <laughs> yeah. I, I bounce around a lot yeah. with my cocktails. It's not like I sit and make the same thing every night. So. Well, and it's a funny thing when I was making these at the house, like this is like a, oh, like I can only drink like one of these mm-hmm. because it's just too much acid after that. Like I'll regret yeah. it the next day. Like if I drink two or three of those done it enough times that I figured out this is not the way to go. That's a one drink and then switching to just like straight whiskey or whatever. Yeah. So I, yeah, I do that a lot too, or switch to brandy or something. Yeah. Yeah. Can't, um, it's just, it's too much, it's too acidic. Yeah. Like, I can, I can drink two of these though. Can you? Yeah. yeah I can right. definitely drink two of these. No, uh, I, I can, but like I say, we'll regret it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I can drink two of them without any trouble. With no, no issues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hear you. Um, so up front this time, I'm going to plug the, I, that I have a sub stack now. All right. Um, it's Michael's meditations on stu- sub stack. And, uh, I'm planning to put stuff out twice a week. Won't be very political most no. of the time. I mean, there's no way that I can I, avoid politics entirely, oh yeah. but, um, but That's it'll the be world a, we live in. Yeah, now. It'll like, be a broader range of, 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 uh, topics than what you get here. I suspect. Well, I read your last one. Enjoyed it. Okay. I don't think I read the opening one. Uh, there's not much in the opening one. It's well, just like... That's what you had said. That's the yeah. reason I didn't go back to it. I was like... Ah. I'm here. This is kind of what I plan to do. That's yeah. that's how it... Yeah. But I read the last one. one. I thought it was good. Oh. Enjoyed it. I'm, I'm glad you did. That was a... That was an experience. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. um, let's see. What else do we have to start? There's something in my eye that I cannot... It's driving me crazy. <laughs> Still fighting it? Yeah. I, I got like... My left eye is just blurry yeah. right now. I keep... I can't... I can't figure out what it is. You're not having a stroke, are you? I, well, 
Who knows? <laughs> you said your left eye, and I was like, it didn't click to me till just now. It's you, like you tell me I'd, if the whole left side of my face starts to droop sometime I'll, during I'll, the podcast. I'll keep my okay? eye on it. You don't right. have any shoulder pain, right? No, no, it's definitely not a heart attack. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm just checking on you, man. Like, I'm confident it's not a heart attack. If I'd have had a heart attack today, it would have been this morning when I was working out. <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Anything else? We anything of substance that we want to hit before we dive in? Actually, no. Yeah. Maybe because because uh, of the Trump stuff again. We're not talking about Trump again, but I, I do want to just talk about all the race baiting BS around him tweeting about the election riggers. The riggers. <laughs> and I, I'm I'm just oh, kind of curious what kind of world we live in now, where you can't even say words that rhyme with words that are bad. It's a dog whistle. We all know what he meant by that. I, that's so absurd. <laughs> that's it, it, an actual r- job, by the way, too. Oh, yeah. Dog whistling? No, riggers. Oh, riggers. Okay. <laughs> riggers are actual, it is an actual job. Yeah. Um, besides the fact, like, so oh, yeah. what prompted well, some this Some of our listeners the, are riggers, I bet. Uh, yeah, probably. I, I'm like serious, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and what prompted this was while I was, <laughs> while I was mixing the cocktails to start with, um, I was telling Liberty Larry that I needed a new jigger. He told me I can't say that anymore. <laughs> you have to whisper that word. Oh, <laughs> uh, and I, yeah, I just I don't I don't understand this world where you can't. I don't like no no words anyway. I think no no words are stupid. Oh yeah. Um, I think that you're really giving it power when you say it can't be said. Well, and but, that's what people don't understand when they start placing th- words and different things in no-no places. Like when you have all these words that can't be said, at least for people like me, and I know I'm not in the minority here, that makes that word all the more loose or want to use it. Like I, yeah, I am going to... You probably are in the minority at this point. I may be, but... But but, yeah. I, but I'm there with you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> like, tell me I can't say something because yeah. I'm gonna say it. That's <laughs> how Owen Benjamin ruined his career. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, we were talking about him the other night, and I could not for the life of me think of his name. Owen Benjamin. Owen Benjamin. Yeah. Oh, he's he's man, awesome. Man, back in the day, like yeah. all his difference between men and women stuff <laughs> was so good. Yeah. It was so insightful too. It's not. Yeah. It was very funny. Great setups. Like is really solid comedy. Very solid comedian. And but but he's like Yeah. He's went over that. He took too many oh, of yeah. the pills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was uh that was what Michael Malice said, right? Like uh yeah. hey Owen, you're supposed to take one red pill, not the whole bottle. Not or the something. whole bottle, <laughs> yeah. No. Um so. it's a shame. That was a that was a fun show we went to in Houston. Yeah, it was. Um, but anyway, um moving on from that, I guess. I just I this Yeah. Yeah, this no no words thing, and not only do you have no no words, but now you have you can't say words that rhyme with no no well, words. It's just, just the whole idea that that you can say something and the other side can just take with that, just interpret it completely wrong and mischaracterize what you said. Like the the whole idea of a dog whistle, like it just that irritates me. Well, man. the the ridiculous thing about it is that all the people that are calling it out as a dog whistle. Like, do they understand what a dog whistle is? Probably like, not. I mean, the the whole point, like the the meaning of the phrase is that you're saying something subtly that only people who were, who would get it would understand it. So all these people so in media, so if they're getting it, then they're the then they're the target audience. <laughs> exactly. So, um, I, I don't. I just don't understand how you can. I guess you find a guy that you hate enough, you can twist anything that he says or does. Are you, are you trying to dump stuff onto my table here, it looks like? I'm not trying to, but, <laughs> but I may. <laughs> That's all right. I guess it'll clean up. It is real wood, though. And real lemon juice. And real lemon juice. <laughs> Which isn't... We'll leave that aside. <laughs> so uh, I think we were talking about maybe going over the Fifth and Sixth Amendment today, but... We're probably going to keep it short and leave this that for another time because we're recording this early because um, we won't be able to meet up later in the week and when I post this. <laughs> this feels like a more free episode anyway. We're just kind of going where it takes us. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't even need to do it because we got one in the can. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we, we're trying to stay ahead, though. Absolutely. Uh, 
And now that we've wasted like 10 minutes at the beginning of this podcast, we may as well start on something of, of substance. Of substance, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I just wanted to talk about the the Hunter Biden stuff. Yeah. You know, just to be fair. You and, mean that conspiracy theory that that the right wing drummed up to try to get Trump elected? That's the one. Is that the one? That's okay. the one. Okay. I, th- I, I just wanted to verify. I think like, it, could, I mean. it could be a, one of many. <laughs> yeah. That, fair. You know. But uh, the, the, I don't know, do we go way back or do we just start with what's going on right now and then go back? I guess we start with what's going on, then we go back. That's fair. Um, so this guy, David Weiss, is a U.S. attorney in Delaware, um, has been prosecuting this case since it started three years ago, something like that. Yeah. Two or three years ago. And... um. There were a bunch of calls to to assign a special counsel to the case because of its politically charged nature. Yeah. And Merrick Garland, um, who's in charge of the Justice Department, kept saying that we didn't need uh, a special counsel. And in fact, that um, David Weiss had more power as U.S. attorney than a special counsel would anyway, and that he had all the power that he needed um, to, uh, to prosecute and... Um, you know, get to a just result in this investigation. Yeah. Well, about two weeks ago, that changed. All right. Um, on the 11th, Merrick Garland appointed a special counsel. The U.S. Yeah. attorney, David Weiss. <laughs> the guy who's already prosecuting the case. That already has all the power he needs to do everything that needs to be done. Now, this is kind of a mockery of the idea of a special <laughs> counsel. Like, uh, you've also probably heard this called independent counsel. Yeah. Um, the it's supposed to be somebody outside of the Justice Department, yeah. and and preferably outside of the government. I mean, like when yeah. um, when Mueller took over the special counsel, he was no longer a part of the government. Yeah. Um, he has government history, of course, but yeah, but he wasn't. But he wasn't employed by the government. Yeah. When he became employed by the government, and so since one of the big questions about this case, since the the purpose of bringing in a special counsel in this case is probably to at least give the, well, actually probably explicitly in this case to give the appearance. And I say that very strongly. That's the key word, the appearance yeah. of fairness in this. Um, why in the world would you bring somebody who already works for Merrick Garland in to do that, that works for the justice department under the Biden presidential administration? Yeah. And of course, the executive is in charge of the Justice Department, so you haven't changed anything. Yeah, there's still the appearance and this is, that this is a Biden appointee, Merrick Garland. Like yes, Biden, Merrick Garland is. Yeah, David Weiss yeah. is not. Okay, um, David Weiss is a but Trump the, appointee. Oh, uh, is he? Okay. So yeah, so that's you know, that's what they're trying to hang to their hat with, on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but all the same, he's still employed by the the father of the person that he's prosecuting. Yeah, like directly. Right. Yeah. Like right th- two down the line. Yeah, right. Um so it anybody who's like who's really paying any attention to this, I don't see how it relieves any of the idea that it may be biased. Yeah. Okay. So another thing that that I can't see has been answered in any way is what additional powers does he now have as a special counsel? that he didn't have as a U.S. attorney, especially since we've been told for years that he had all the power that he needed. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure Garland answered that from the beginning, (laughs) that he already had all the power he needed. Yeah, but since he's been named special counsel, why haven't we gotten any additional information on this? Why hasn't anybody gotten an answer out of Merrick Garland as to what has changed? Yeah, yeah, because nothing's changed. This is, it's all just trying to put talking points in the headlines. Mm -hmm. Um, now there, there has been some, uh, like there has been some reporting that he was having trouble bringing charges in some districts that, you know, some attorneys weren't, uh, cooperating in particular federal districts that's coming, I think mostly from the IRS whistleblowers. Um, and they did say over and over again that as a special counsel, he can bring charges in, in, in any federal district and so forth. So maybe that's the reason, but it hasn't been stated explicitly. Yeah. Um, and, but that, I mean, I can give them 
like a little bit of a benefit there that maybe that's it. Maybe that's that, the reason. That could be the reason. That could be this extra power that he has that he didn't have before, and he needs it because, you know, some um, less objective uh, attorneys aren't willing to bring or allow charges to be brought against the president's son. Yeah. Don't know. Just a guess. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be fair on this. Yeah. Um, now, uh, the, I, I mean, a lot of this started with the IRS whistleblowers making the case that, or making the claim, I, I, I think a credible claim that David Weiss was not pursuing this, um, case in good faith, that they were delaying to try and potentially to try and, um, let the, uh, statute of limitations lapse on yeah. some of these charges that um, that they weren't pursuing it with all the uh, the rigor that they should to actually bring a solid case and, and so forth. So, um, and you'll of course remember that they, the judge previously, when they brought in this pardon or uh, this, I don't know, what did, what did they call the, it was that, that it was such a sweetheart deal. Oh yeah. Wasn't that the, the yeah, phrasing this, that they kept using? Yeah. Um, the, the sweetheart deal, uh, about, um, uh, an agreement between the prosecution and the defense. Um, and the judge looked at it and said, this is ridiculous. We would never give this much latitude. Oh yeah. Um, and it, essentially what it said was that it was dropping some charges, uh, tax charges and the gun, um, charge, the, the lie on the application for a gun permit yeah. about his drug use and some tax evasion stuff um, that it was dropping that. And it was also including um, a pardon for any potential future offenses that may be uncovered or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. And the judge was like, no, this is. Yeah. That's, that's insanity. Yeah, yeah. We can't do this. Why would you? Yeah. Who would um, allow that? So that happened. And then, not too long later, Merrick Garland names David Weiss as a special counsel. And then since, and I haven't been able to, to double check this, by the way. Uh, I heard one report of this and I, I hadn't been able to verify. Um, so this could be wrong. Yeah. But my understanding from this report is that since he's been named special counsel, David Weiss has actually dropped the tax evasion charges really? from the docket. Yeah. So they're still not going to prosecute the tax evasion. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they can get away without doing it, they absolutely won't. Yeah. Um, and so then I think we kind of got to go back a little bit and, and see where all these, like a lot of this stems from, um, which is the, the Biden family business deals during the time that Biden was vice president is a lot of this. Yeah. Um, where Hunter Biden was being paid by international groups for his obvious skills, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, which Traveling. I identify as uh, as being able to find and acquire drugs and hookers. Yeah, that's my best guess as to what they're paying him <laughs> I mean, for is to what, be the party the, organizer. Yeah, that's that seems to be the the skill he has. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, of course, the big one is Bur Burisma, the energy company in Ukraine. Yeah. And we have to remember that Biden was running Ukraine mm -hmm. when he was vice president. He was point man. Yeah. Um, on a very granular level, I think. But I, I mean, I don't know that for sure. But it, it certainly seems that he was playing a very large part in decision making in the supposedly importantly sovereign Ukraine. Yeah. And uh, after the coup, when they threw out, when the U.S. helped organize people to throw out the... Uh, the guy who was a little too closely aligned with Russia as far as they were concerned. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the famous phone call where Victoria Newland is uh, identifying who the new government's going to be. And then they are two weeks later yeah. after a coup, <laughs> um, you know, all this was going on and, and um, Hunter was named as a board member for Burisma in Ukraine and getting paid like a million dollars a year again, for his obvious skills yeah, right. in, um, in managing energy business in uh, a country, Eastern Europe. In a country that he doesn't even speak the language. Right. 
<laughs> That's why I'm guessing the the what they really hired him for was the party supplies. The, the hookers and blow, yeah. But another possibility is that they were hiring him because they needed a uh, a pipeline to access the vice president of the United States who was really the person running their country. Absolutely. And Biden at the time, like he has bragged about uh, getting Victor Shokin um, fired, who is a prosecutor in Ukraine. And the story that we keep hearing from the mainstream media is that uh, that Shokin was corrupt and um, that uh, Biden and he was refusing to investigate Burisma, where Hunter was on the board. Yeah. Um, and so this was actually like bad for Burisma because Burisma controlled this guy. And so Biden wasn't actually acting in Burisma's interest. He was acting against Burisma's interest when he threatened to um, to refuse or, well, um, to withhold, I guess, loan guarantees to Ukraine yeah. if they didn't fire this guy. Yeah. Now, this is just an out-and-out -out lie. Yeah. Um, the guy was actively investigating Burisma, and that was the problem. Yeah. And any control that they had over him was probably exactly what happened, which is that they had a pipeline to the vice president of the United States who could put Take care pressure this. Yeah. on this guy and have him removed. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that's the, that's the situation here. Yeah. I mean, it's incredibly corrupt <laughs> and, and I don't like Donald Trump. <laughs> Don't yeah. like Donald Trump. Well, of course not. He's it's, he's a terrible person. He's despicable. He yeah. is. But like to compare, to favorably compare Biden's deep corruption as a member of the government with Donald Trump's essentially process crimes that they're trying to. I, I mean, and yeah. I think the the cases are weak. But yeah. even if the cases aren't weak. I mean, what you're really There's talking about still, is process crimes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, it's the big difference between the two, though, is what what Biden is has been doing and is accused of doing here. You can find tons of people in Congress right now that are doing the same thing oh, on, yeah. a, on a smaller level, mm -hmm. um, and that's the reason the appetite. Beyond Biden is just an establishment guy. Yeah. Um, beyond that, that's the big reason why the appetite isn't as big to deal with this is because there's a bunch of people sitting in Congress right now that know they're on the hook for the same type thing. Yeah, that's true. And they don't want to open the door to that. Well, and they have the ability to keep that door closed. A absolutely. And that's you're right. That's that's the real problem. I mean, ideally, all of these people would be held accountable for their corruption. Oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, that's not likely to that's not likely to happen. No. <laughs> Only way yeah. they're going to be held accountable for the corruption is that the ballot box never vote for an incumbent. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I say that. I, I wouldn't say never is a strong word. Yeah. Be cautious. <laughs> yeah. But know what your guys doing. Yeah. Go to opensecrets.org. Like see where they're getting money. Yeah. That's a that's always That tells you a lot right there. Mm -hmm. Um, so essentially that's, that's what's going on with this case. Well, is that and I don't want people to forget because it's so far in the rear view mirror that it's easy to do that this was completely brushed under the rug and swept off of social media during the election. Right. Oh, that, that's actually, you're right. That's an important point. The whole Biden laptop, Hunter Biden laptop thing that yeah. was, uh, that they had 50 something former um, intelligence, intelligence guys saying yep. that it was Russian disinformation, which was just a blatant lie. Just out and out lie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. it, it's kind of amazing how much, uh, how much energy has been put into keeping this under wraps. Absolutely. Well, and, and they did such a good job of it during the, during the 2020 election. Like this all was in the process of coming out and, like I say, I've never seen an effort to to just completely wipe something off social media like what was done then. Yeah. I mean, I think that's... I the mean, New I, York Post is one of the oldest newspapers in the country. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. it's just wild that, that that... But that happened. And now it's all... Of course, now it's all out there. and it's, You can talk about it now. But at mm -hmm. the time, 
Like that was completely forbidden. Yeah. You know? And would that have made a difference in the election? It might have. Uh, it definitely could have. Mm-hmm. Like I said. I mean, I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, it, I mean, we're, I we're so starkly divided at this point well, that I don't know. It, it, you know, it's the same kind of thing about like if if Donald Trump ends up being prosecuted and even jailed in Georgia, yeah, is that going to make a difference in his election results? I don't know that it does. No, I, like, I don't, that's how messed up I this country is at this point. <laughs> no, I think you're right. I don't think it does, mm. but. Because he's not the other guy, and that's one of the yeah. terrible things about where we've gotten with this two-party system and the and the quote unquote democracy in this country, um, is that, well, first off, those two parties do everything in their power to make sure that they are the two parties. Yeah, and the apparent differences between them aren't nearly as important to them as making sure that somebody else doesn't get into the fray. Yeah. And when it when it comes right down to it, that's how they succeed over and over again, is because you're given this false dichotomy, um, this binary choice that doesn't really exist as a binary, and it, it doesn't exist as a binary in a couple of ways. Like first off, there are other options, and secondly, that binary really doesn't exist. There's there's not a lot of difference between those two parties on anything that actually affects your life. No, um, and. The well, but it, you, you get in the situation where because fear, like we were talking about with Mike Termot, yeah. fear is the most effective uh, strategy. Yeah. So it's not that how much you can do or how much better you are than the other guy. It's that well, you don't want that other guy though, do yeah, you? Just think of how bad it could be mm-hmm. if the other side. Yeah. You know. I mean, and I saw this most starkly in the 2016 election because Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were the two most hated candidates in history. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Joe Biden isn't hated in the same way that Hillary Clinton was. No, absolutely. Um, which is why well, it was, and, and hated by both sides because yeah. I know, um, at least as far as Hillary Clinton is concerned, like I didn't meet a Democrat that liked Hillary Clinton. Yeah, like there was it. It never was like, oh my God, Hillary's so great. It's always well. I mean, look at who she's running against. Like that was always when mm-hmm. I talked to Democrats, what I heard. And that's unusual. Like, I mean, I remember specifically like with Obama, like people loved Obama. Yeah. And the same thing with Bush. Like people loved Bush. Like it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't like they hated their own candidate. He's but, like your idiot brother. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> um, that but, retarded cousin that you know. <laughs> yeah. Just happened to run the country for like eight years. Just <laughs> wanted to drink beer with or whatever. Remember mm-hmm. that? It wasn't, wasn't it's, it really with Bush when the, like the beer, the, yeah, thing. the guy you could have a beer with. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, but you know, I mean, but Hillary Clinton, like, like I didn't meet any Democrats that, that was like, she's the person. Yeah. It was always, but it was fear. It mm-hmm. was, that's absolutely what it was. Yeah. Well, and it continues that way. Um, and it'll, you know, the, the Biden Trump thing. I mean, people didn't love Biden. They just didn't hate him. Yeah. And I guess we're kind of running into the same thing again, but it seems to me that they're actually selecting the worst candidates they can just to make sure that one of them stays in power. Yeah. Well, I, I go back it's, to It's the, what you run into all the time when you try and talk somebody into voting for any third party. Oh, yeah. Is that, well, that's just a wasted vote. If, I, if I'm not voting for the Republican or the Democrat, I'm essentially voting for the other side. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's stupid. Yeah. I, I mean, like, so I do understand your point. And first off, I would point out that, well... I would say that if you look at it that way, then if you don't vote for the winner, your vote didn't count. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the difference? Yeah. Um, but at, at the same time, like, I don't understand why you would say that your vote's important so you can express your opinion. And then not express your opinion. And like, yeah. That's the way I see it. Yeah. You know. If you're not voting for somebody that you believe in, then what was the point of your vote anyway? Why did you even bother? Yeah. Yeah. You're better off abstaining. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let's, let's show these people how much we don't care. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Well, there's definitely something to be said though, about like Trump was a, an anti-establishment figure. And I don't know. I'm, I I said it last week on the podcast. I think that this, this election is going to be interesting Mm -hmm. just because I think that, I think that anti-establishment, like fervor is going to head somewhere else. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it may all go to Trump again, and that may be like we may be destined for another showdown with Trump and some Democrat. Mm-hmm. But 
I don't know, man. This one, to me, this one feels different. Like, well, we're going to see how it plays out. There's still a long way to go, but I don't know. Something, something feels different about this one. So what, what's the anti-establishment on the Republican side other than Trump, though? I mean, Vivek Ramaswamy, maybe? Maybe if he can, can position himself right. I like that guy. I've listened to him a fair amount. Um, I mean, I'm not like a supporter, but but he's interesting. Yeah. Um, so, but I don't I don't know if he's got he's not doesn't have the same like flamethrower personality like Trump does. Yeah. Like I just don't feel like he's going to get that kind of. I mean, it's really on the Republican side that's Trump. I feel like. And then on the left, you got uh, RFKJ. RFK, which the left is interesting because without Biden, they've got nobody. Um. I mean, there's nobody else in the race, and I just I don't see Biden go, making it through another campaign. Like, I don't think that they can drag him through this again. Yeah, Although I, I did hear some stuff earlier today, actually, that you know they may be trying to drum this COVID thing up again. Oh, they, I mean, that's obvious. You don't think yeah. that that's? Oh uh, no, I think it's that's what's going to happen. I mean, I think the question is is will the people allow it? Um, is really where my question's at. No, they're going to try to put us in another COVID election here. The RSV thing is really weird. I just want to point this out. Like, um, RSV has been around for a long time. I, yeah. I was talking off axis. I hope that got picked up <laughs> by the mic. Yeah. Um, RSV has been around for a long time, but I have never heard of it being a particularly dangerous virus for adults. For adults, yeah. Yeah. But they're throwing that out there like it is a big thing to be worried about. Yeah. Well, and I don't. They're they're always floating these potential pandemics. I mean, yeah. you go back decades, like as long as I can remember, almost like there's been these potential pandemics on the horizon, mm -hmm. but they've never really landed it like they did with COVID. Um, I I, I don't yeah. know if it can. I don't think I don't know that they can recreate that magic that happened with COVID. But I don't know, man. Well, they'll just, they'll just have to create a new, better bug. Yeah. Well, or create a, a better bug than not, the one they created. It's <laughs> not, yeah, right. Well, <laughs> maybe. But but the real question is, is like after having just came through all of this, or will people really revert back? Um, and there's plenty of people who welcome it. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people that still haven't gone haven't back. Re no, there is. And th those are the people that I'm talking about that mm -hmm. would welcome a reoccurrence of this. Yeah. But there's... There's so many more. I don't of us. know that they would welcome a reoccurrence. I feel bad for those people, like the people that I still see, like walking oh, down yeah. the street wearing a mask. Oh yeah, yeah. Like and, the like, and you know, the, and the young, <laughs> youngish, like middle aged people walking down the street or riding their bike wearing a mask. Like I, I don't. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I really feel bad for these. Like it's it, it's like a mental illness or something. Yeah. I mean, it's there's definitely some kind of block there. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I'm no psychiatrist. So. It's a, it's this weird trust in government. I, I was thinking about this earlier today, um, that because there's some, there was a weird thing that came up and, and one of my friends was like, ah, oh, that's pretty shady. And, uh, and I was like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I, um, actually it was GI Greg. <laughs> All right. It was shady. I was like, I don't think so. I, I think, I don't think that it's nefarious. I think it's incompetent. Okay. Um, and that maybe that's just my like unwavering faith in people Yeah. to like figure out what's best for themselves and to, that they're, they're not trying to hurt people around them or do bad things. They're trying to do good things. They're just maybe not so good at it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I, I think that that's, that's one of the problems that I, that people have with government. All right, so there's another well, friend of mine that th there's this like weird faith in government. That's what I was which, fixing to say. Yeah. So, and that's that's what I find. I mean, that to me, that's the big difference I find when I talk to Democrats mm -hmm. is that it's like there's this mental block there that they can't recognize that the government can do bad things. Yeah. Like it's it's like they they just they have this belief in government that it's capable of all of these things that it's proven to you over and over it can't do, mm -hmm. but yet they're like, well, but just a, like your school bus thing, just a little more, just a little more, yeah, you know. Yeah. If we just throw this other thing on top of it, we won't make more problem, we'll make less. Exactly, but, but it never works that way. Yeah, I mean, try and seriously think about what government has ever done for you that's actually been helpful to you in the long run. Yeah. 
I, I, uh, and and try and like and I understand if you're sitting there thinking, well, you know, when I was unemployed during COVID, yeah. um, they were sending me money. Yeah, but why were you unemployed during COVID? Would well, be, would okay. be the first place I would go. Yeah, but and that's the first question, and then the second yeah. question is how much is that money worth now? Oh yeah, oh what that one hundred percent. Yeah, uh, and so. and again, I don't think that I don't think that government is nefarious. I just think that they don't think things through. That yeah. they, this is the has always been the problem with um, socialism, is that there's nobody that can have enough information to predict the future well enough to know what all the consequences of their actions are. Yeah. Th this is why a, a socialist economy can't work is yeah. because there's just too many individual actions that, that feed into an economy that determine what's needed and what's wanted and where things should be and how resources should be distributed. And there's all these variables, all these variables that there's no one person or even collection of people that yeah. can determine in advance where all the resources need to go to meet all the needs and all the wants of all the people. Yeah. It just can't be done. The Absolutely. closest thing to the, the closest thing to do is to just allow everybody to make decisions. Let entrepreneurs sit out there and try and figure out and, and then make predictions about what needs to go where. Yeah. And reward the success and the failures go out of the market. And then those resources are freed up for better things. Well, and and it may not act as quickly as you like, but it is a more accurate result. It, it more closely well, resembles a, what's actually needed. It's a, it's a stronger result, like mm -hmm. fundamentally. Like you, you're built on a, a stronger base under that type of system than you are with a socialist where you've got government mm -hmm. trying to figure all of these things out. Yeah. You know. Um, you want to transition again? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, I just wanted to talk about the gender wage gap thing. Oh, that's right. Um, and I, okay. So I, I had a very brief discussion with somebody a month or so ago on the gender wage gap. And, um, like the topic came up and she essentially just shut me down and said, I'm placating you right now. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, look, I'm not invested. I mean, I didn't say this, but I was like, I'm not invested. You're not placating me. You're placating yourself. I was actually kind yeah. of surprised because this didn't strike me as a person that would, you know, want to remain ignorant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Anyway, um, but it, it can't, I don't know. I was thinking about it recently because of the women's soccer team, because that's, that was the reason that we talked about this the first time. The first go around, yeah. Um, which was like years ago now. Yeah. Is that the women's uh, U.S. women's soccer team demanding equal pay um, when they just don't generate the same kind <laughs> of revenue that the men do? But yeah, I, as I remember, when you broke the numbers down, they made more versus the revenue than what the men do. Oh yeah, they they <laughs> they got a much higher percentage of the revenue yeah. of the total revenue um, than the men did, yeah. and and in this uh, this women's FIFA World Cup that has just gone on or has been going on. Um, not going on for us anymore. They go, yeah. Well, the, yeah. The U.S. <laughs> women are out. Yeah. Uh, worst performance ever, I think. But um, they've been going on about this. Uh, FIFA has that this is the most attended women's World Cup in history. Really? Yeah. But they still can't fill stadiums. <laughs> yeah. Right. And they've been giving tickets away. Wow. They've been offering free tickets and still, still can't, can't fill sell them out. Fill yeah. stadiums. Wow. And, uh, cause there's just, there's just not the same level of interest. Yeah. And maybe that sucks. And I actually like really like women's soccer. So, yeah. I, you know, I, but the point is this. So going back to the gender wage gap, the, the way it's presented is that women make 80 cents on the dollar versus what men make, um, for the same work. Yeah. That's, that's the argument you always hear. This is another blatant lie. Yeah. Uh, that is not what the statistic is. Yeah. So, and I know that people are going to get upset about this, but this is, this is the statistic. Yeah. The statistic is that they took the average income of all full-time male workers and they compared it against the average income of all full-time female workers. Okay. This is not an apples to apples comparison. Yeah. In aggregate, men make more than women. Yeah. But when you start controlling for things that affect pay, yeah, you know, let's start with uh, 
hours worked. Yeah. The number gets closer. Industry, the number gets closer. Like every time you start controlling for something that might affect the the income of the person, yeah. seniority, education, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, like all of these things that affect people's income, yeah. um, the number gets closer and closer. And so when you actually get down to the point where you're comparing equal work to equal work, yeah. the number's like 98 cents to the dollar. Wow. Yeah. On average. Yeah. Um, and some which go the a, other way. Which is a rounding error. Yeah. And some yeah. go the other way. Yeah. First off, it's within the the um, margin, of margin of error. Yeah. Um, secondly, that kind of thing can be easily explained through other other yeah. issues, like just personality issues that, that um, men tend to be more aggressive in trying to get more pay. Yeah. Uh, arguing for a higher pay, um, where women tend to be more accepting. Yeah. Whether you like that or not, that's just the truth. It's just the facts on the ground, yeah. Yeah. Um, you could probably speak from your own experience in this, like offering people oh, yeah. uh, starting um, pay rates. No, it's true. Um, and, and men are going to haggle with you. Like, it's yeah. just, that's, yeah. Whatever number you throw out, that's the starting number. <laughs> yeah. And what about <laughs> and, and the women? it's not that way with women. Like, okay. absolutely not that way. I mean, that's just my personal experience, mm -hmm. but but that, that jives. Yeah. But the point is, it's not just your personal experience. Yeah. Like, this is, this is an, an experience that's reported across industries. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from headhunters and, and so forth who are finding jobs for people and they offer everybody the same thing. Yeah. to start yeah. and and they'll report over and over again well the men uh the men haggle and the women accept yeah yeah it's just just the nature of things and uh so but this is this is the argument that i want to make this time that i don't think that we made last time okay and particularly because this is a bigger issue it seems to me for people on the left than people on the right yeah so um so the starting assumption of the people on the left is that the the business owners are just greedy people who will pay their employees as little as they possibly can. If they could pay them nothing, they would. They would keep slaves, you know, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, but let me then ask you this. If you could get the exact same work out of two different people as a business owner, this greedy business owner yep. could get the exact same work out of two different people. And one of them, they had to pay $100,000 a year. And one of them, they had to pay $80,000 a year. Which one are they going to hire? Oh, well, I mean, you're going to hire the 100000 because that's a guy. <laughs> I'm going to hire the man because I'm paying more. <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it <laughs> it's, it's just it, the, the, the obvious answer for any business person is that if they can pay somebody less to do the same job, yeah. they're going to pay somebody less to do the same job. Yeah. So why are women not just... All over every industry. Yeah. Filling every position everywhere. Exactly. Because you can hire them for less, apparently. Yeah. According to that statistic. You yeah. Know. Um, so why wouldn't that be done everywhere? Why is this the one case where uh, employers just want to pay more money to get the same work? Yeah. No. Um, I mean, even if that was true, those businesses wouldn't last. Yeah. Yeah, because the competition's going to scoop that cheap labor up. Right. You know, every time. So, I, I mean, I think that on the face of it, it's just it's just absurd to believe that that women and men get paid twenty percent difference for the same work. Yeah. It's just not true. And like I said, dig into the statistic. I'm sure there's a bunch of people out there just like screaming at their radio right now or their <laughs> their iPhone or whatever. Yeah. Um, but. Like, go look it up. There's yeah. plenty of places that they have examined the statistic. And go figure out exactly what it is. Because what I said is what it is. It's yeah. just an average aggregate. It is not a comparison of equal work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the argument, if there is any from the other side, would be, well, we need to get more women into those other industries. Well, that's up to the women, isn't it? Well, but that's where, <laughs> like for people like me and you, that's where free choice kind of mm -hmm. comes in, you know? Well, and then you start looking at the statistics where they're, uh, at least the, um, when you look at countries where there is a more egalitarian uh, gender system, yeah, the, the differences in these statistics actually are heightened. Really? When, yeah, when, um, so you look at the, like some of the Scandinavian countries, 
uh, the the differences between the kinds of of employment that women take and men take, where they where they have a freer choice and so forth, yeah. it actually becomes heightened. Really, um, that it, it just seems to be that given the choice, women choose different kind of jobs than men choose. Yeah. And I don't see anybody complaining about that, like something like 90% of workplace deaths are men. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. like nobody's out there saying that that's obviously uh, gender discrimination. Uh, have, ha- having worked with a bunch of men and women at different times in different areas, mm-hmm. men just take more risk, man. Yeah. Like I know a lot of it does have to do with the industries that they choose and the mm-hmm. work that they choose, yeah. but Men like to kind of let it all hang out too. <laughs> well, it, it's evolution. Yeah. The, the, there's more reward for men in risk than there is for women. Yeah. I mean, over time, um, the, the men who have risked more have gained more. The women who have risked more have lost their kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, when you put it that way. Like, <laughs> or, or didn't get to have kids in the first place. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas, you know, there's plenty of men that risked and didn't get to have kids in the first place, but they're on the whole, there is a, an evolutionary advantage to taking risks for men that doesn't exist for women. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it definitely pans out once again in my personal experience. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, and it's not to say that there isn't gender discrimination. I, I would yeah. never make that. There are, there are people who are prejudiced. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, I would <laughs> never try to make that argument that there's no such thing as gender discrimination. But the statistic is not representative of gender discrimination. And yeah. the differences that exist between actual pay between men and women, um, you know, when you actually are comparing apples to apples for the same work, yeah. are probably not gender discrimination either. Yeah. I mean, they can be explained in a whole lot of ways. Yeah. Well, and for the for the gender discrimination that's out there, like that usually plays catch up. Like a, a business, just like kind of what we said earlier, like if you've got some guy running a business that's a sexist or whatever, like it's going to hurt his business in the long run. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's the, the market kind of has a system to filter that kind of stuff out. Not to say that doesn't exist because obviously it does, but the, the, the free market can kind of suss some of that out. And uh, okay. And I'll concede this too. So here's a place where there really is gender discrimination um, is the, is pregnancy. Yeah. All right. Pregnancy affects a business. Yeah. When an employee has to leave for maternity leave, you have to keep that job open. You have to fill it in the meantime. You have to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Like that affects the bottom line. It does. Um, and so there is probably some gender discrimination in that sense. And I, I know that I've had several women tell me that every job interview that they ever had, there's been some question about whether they thought that they would become pregnant or whatever. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, that's illegal. <laughs> I would never ask those kind of questions it's, it's, in an interview. I, I suspect that it's not asked directly. I'm sure like it's that. not. It's, but even still, though, like, you know, that's just a dirty thing to do. But it's understandable, is it not? It is. Well, and it, it's one of those things, like, as somebody that's been in the position for a long time now of hiring people, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it's just one of those things you kind of accept. Like, if I'm hiring a lady, like, I'm not asking those questions, but it's kind of built into my calculation that, you know, these kind of things are going to come up. Yeah. But truth be told, the, I have the same kind of reservations when I hire guys about other type of things coming up. So yeah. it's it's a it's all kind of a calculated... Balances in the end, really? Yeah. Well, I was going to say on that particular point, as um, there has become more egalitarianism about the, uh, the role of parenthood for both men and women in terms of employment. Yeah. So you have, now you don't just have maternity leave, there's paternity leave as well. Yeah. Um, as those benefits become more equal in terms of like how much time off a, a man gets for paternity leave as, as a woman gets from maternity leave and so forth. Yeah. Even those different or those. Yeah. Even those differences are going to, are going to disappear. Yeah. Um, in terms of the employment or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, because the, the, it's not that you're a woman and that you're having a baby. It's that you may be gone for however many weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And if men are offered those same kind of benefits, then it doesn't affect the hiring process at all. Yeah. No, so. that's true. So, 
So now that we've thoroughly pissed everybody <laughs> off. All right. We yeah. we got the we got the Trump haters, we got the women, we got the <laughs> yeah, yeah. everybody's angry. Probably employers too. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. We we hit the whole gambit tonight. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. may as well wrap it up. Yeah. So uh unless you got something else you want to add. I'm good. All right. Um, well, uh we plan to be back here next week. Uh you can find us on Facebook, iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Um, like and share, comment, subscribe. Uh, you can send me a message at michael at the if you want to, you know, yell at me by email. <laughs> um, or if you have some statistics that you want to share that totally blow out my hypothesis there, who knows? Um, I'd be interested to see some of that. I would too. So. I, like I am willing to be, I'm data driven. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, show you me the data. Show me, yeah, show me the data. Um, Yeah, so, but uh, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.